Thomas East was a criminal lawyer and a good friend. Good enough that I traveled 1,500 miles without hesitation because he wired he had to see me, but it was urgent. I tell you, Mike, someone is trying to kill me. Are you serious? Yes. Well, who is it? I don't know. But you must suspect someone. No one. That's what's so frustrating. What's happened exactly? About a month ago, a car almost knocked me over. Several times, a black sedan has tried to push me off the road. It always happens at night. I haven't been able to get the license number. Have you gone to the police? I don't want to for the moment. Well, why not, Tom? It's quite a story, Mike, and I'm due in court in 20 minutes. Here's my new address. Come over for dinner tonight. I'd like to. Fine. You've moved, huh? Yes. May thought we needed more room. Make yourself at home, Mike. I'll see you at 8.30. Thanks, Tom. All that afternoon, I kept thinking about Tom's fears. In or out of the courtroom, he was an actor. There were many times when I didn't know whether he was serious or not. But this time, he had been serious, dead serious. According to the newspaper story, he left the courthouse and was on his way to a parking lot for his automobile. Maybe it was just another hit and run case, but I couldn't forget Tom's words. Somebody is trying to kill me. I thought about May, Tom's wife. I called on May East. Her maid told me she was upstairs dressing, that she wanted me to wait. It was a beautiful room, comfortable too. It wasn't difficult to see how happy Tom and May had been, and how tough it must now be for her. Sorry, I am. It's been an awful show. I still can't believe it. I know. I wonder if you're able to answer a few questions for me. Anything, Mike. You're like part of my family. Thanks. Yesterday I saw Tom. He sent for me. Did he tell you why? Not that I remember. Well, he told me something. I really didn't believe it. But now I'm not so sure. Oh, I know what he told you. If I had it to do all over again, I never would have said it. I didn't know that a week later he'd be dead. Mike, I didn't think he'd send for you. After all, it was only a family affair. I just wish I'd never brought it up. Why? I don't think you understand. What he said had nothing to do with the family. Mike, didn't Tom tell you I'd asked for a divorce? No, he said something quite different. What happened between you and Tom? Well, it's a familiar story. Our marriage just didn't work out. Maybe it was my fault, I don't know. Tom was possessive. And suddenly I found myself longing to go back to work again. I wanted a divorce and he didn't want to give me one. Oh, we never argued about it. I think he was just beginning to agree with me that we'd both be better off living apart when this horrible thing happened. Oh, Mike, I wish I'd never upset him. I'm sure he would have given you a divorce. I knew Tom pretty well. Sure, he was always possessive about the things he wanted, but never to a point to hurt anyone. Why did he send for you? Because he believed someone was trying to kill him. It's impossible. Why? Oh, Mike, everybody loved Tom. I know. Maybe it's just a coincidence, but I'm not so sure. Did he ever discuss his business with you? Rarely. The most I ever knew about his business was what I'd read in the papers. Most of his clients were notorious. Huh. Ironically, that was the reason for our first quarrel. What do you mean? The first time he brought a client home, I recognized him. He'd been indicted for murder. 
Tom was defending him. After he left, I, I told Tom I didn't want to entertain killers. He just laughed, and he said he'd win an acquittal for him, and then a man wouldn't be a murderer. I'm staying at the ambassador. If you need anything, call me, huh? And, Mike, if you find out anything, will you tell me? Sure. I thought about what Mia told me. I could understand why she was so upset. It was difficult for me to imagine that she and Tom, had he lived, would have parted. It's always hard for me to understand divorce, and this one was even rougher. I was headed for Lieutenant Joe Neely's office. I had telephoned and left word for him to expect me. He was in homicide. I needed some questions answered. There is one witness, Mike, but not a very good one. His name is Arthur Keegan, who addressed 719 Sala Street. He thinks it was a black sedan or maybe a coupe. Didn't know the year or model. After a few questions, he was like most witnesses. Ended up not even sure the hit and run car wasn't a convertible. Not a very good start, huh? This report reads like a perfect hit and run. East's body must have been thrown 150 feet. The car was traveling between 55 and 60 miles an hour. It didn't even slow down. We blocked off the street and checked the tire tracks. Pretty hard to distinguish. To make matters worse, the accident happened on the badly lit side of the street where East's car was parked in a lot. He was probably hit when he crossed the street. I don't think you ever felt a thing. Do me a favor, will you? What kind of a favor? Well, give me an okay to go through all of Tom's files. Not give me a lead on something. I'll even do better than that. I'll go with you. If you're right, this is no longer hit and run. It's murder. Neither Neely nor I had found anything unusual. We had been checking for about four hours. Mike, I can't stay here all day. Huh? Why don't you go? If I find anything, I'll call you. It's a regular, Mike, so if you do come across anything, don't hold it back. Don't worry. If I don't hear, I'll call you. I was about to call it quits when I came across a personal file. It contained a sheet of paper with the name Ray Arthur and two typed letters. One to Babe Fox, the other to Janice Haven. These two names I knew well, but Ray Arthur was new to me. The letters from Tom to Babe Fox and Janice Avon were angry in tone. Tom threatened to dismiss them both as clients. In the letters to Janice, he mentioned political friends. To Fox, he practically said, get another attorney. Tom was presently defending Fox on an income tax charge. I wondered why he changed his mind. Janice Avon wouldn't kill anyone, but Babe Fox was capable of murder and clever enough to make it look like hit and run. I telephoned Neely about the Fox letter. Neely said, you can't accuse a man of murder because his attorney wanted to dismiss him. I said, maybe. But my next stop was going to be the Midnight Club, a smart joint owned by Babe Fox. He was there. Hello, Babe. You haven't changed much. The world's been good to me. Yes, from some papers I read, I think you'd have to pay for it. Don't believe what you read. It's like I say to all my friends, just a misunderstanding. Nothing to worry about. Didn't the death of Tom East come at an inopportune moment for you? Yeah, it bothered me for a day. But with money, you get lawyers. I got money. Oh, babe, I've never been fond of you. If you don't level with me, I'm going to enjoy taking you apart. The next time you make a move like that, I won't be so polite. Mike, you haven't changed. I don't want any rough stuff. Say what's on your mind. If I've got the answer, you can have it. I want the answers to two questions. Why didn't East want to handle your case? And who killed him? I don't know anything about a killing. When I read the story, I believed it. Tom and I go back a long way together. He met his wife here. You remember, May in Madrid? Frankie Madrid, yeah. What happened to him? Killed 12 years ago in the South Pacific. They were a great dance team. The best. A guy around town calls himself Ray Arthur, dancer. Looks something like Madrid, but he couldn't tie Frankie's shoelaces. Oh. Maybe I made a mistake with you, Mike, about East not wanting to handle my case. It's true. But he would have changed his mind. He did it before. 
We argued good sometimes, but like I say, we go back a long ways together. He knows enough about me to send me up for a long time, but he was a great mouthpiece. And you don't kill a man who keeps you out of stir. You understand? Yes, babe, I understand. I understand that nothing you've just said would mean a thing if you decided to kill him. Why don't you change your clothes? You're all wet. Babe Fox had mentioned Ray Arthur, the same name that I'd found scribbled in Tom's personal file. But first, I wanted to find Janice Avon. She had a small, expensive club on the other side of town. It was a good 20-minute drive. Janice wasn't hard to find, and she hadn't changed. She was beautiful. Hello, Janice. Hello, doll. Long time no see. Yeah. What do you have? Like always. Just you. Go away, Joe. I haven't seen this guy in too many years. I want to go in the wagon so I can enjoy talking to him. You heard what the lady said. Okay, doll. What do you want with me? Does the name Tom East mean anything to you? Yeah. A couple of times he handled some business for me. Oh, what kind of business? Lover. You've been around too long to ask those minor league questions. Listen, Janice, I'm serious. What about that letter he sent to you? The one about political friends? That's what I've always liked about you, doll. With you, nothing's ever a secret. Why do you want to know? I want to know if it was important enough for murder. In my book, Tom's death was not an accident. If I didn't know you, doll, I'd say you think like a cop. I'm still waiting. If you fell in love with a dame, do you think you'd be that persistent? You're like the ocean. You never stop. What about it, huh? Shows you how wrong a girl can be. All the time, Dal, I thought you came to see me, when all you wanted was some answers. Baby, I own this joint. If we have three customers a night, the till shows a profit. This naturally upsets a customer every now and then. A girl in the city needs friends. Sometimes a donation will help to get the right friends. Tom was sore because I thought maybe a signature I had on the back of a check might bring me a little more goodwill. When I told it to him, he blew his cork. Well, that's it. And I can't make it any more interesting. Doll, you've known me a long time. I'll play any game, but murder is out of bounds. In a way, I'm glad. Well, I figure that's all you want to know. So do me a favor, doll. The guy at the bar is the third customer tonight. In the next half hour, the joint closes, and the till is crying for some profit. I understand. Doll, if you come back again, no more questions. I remember that. It was 4 a.m. when I reached my hotel. I thought about Babe Fox. He was no good, but he wasn't a fool. He didn't kill Tom East. As for Janice, her only vice was patting a check. She wasn't a murderer. And I thought about Ray Arthur, a cheap imitation of the great dancer, Frankie Madrid. Ray Arthur was going to have a visitor. What I needed was a good night's sleep, because between now and a lot of tomorrows, I was going to keep looking for the person who killed Tom East. The next morning, I called Lieutenant Neely. I told him about my meeting with Babe Fox. I agreed you couldn't accuse a man of murder because of a letter from his attorney. I asked him to get me the address of a dancer named Ray Arthur and the home telephone number of Janice Avon. He said it would take a little while. I said I'd have breakfast and wait for his call. What's it all about? No, it's not important. I saw Janice last night and I promised to call her. I forgot to take her number. Huh? I understand Ray Arthur, a pretty good dance instructor. A friend of mine wants to take lessons. I'll call you later. 
Right. I telephoned Janice and gave her the address of the Rio Mine dance studio. I told her to meet me there at 11. She hollered she hadn't seen 11 a.m. for over 15 years, but she finally agreed. I also called May and said I was on my way over to see her. I remembered how much you like coffee. Thanks. Mike, have you found out anything? Yes. I'm positive now Tom was murdered. It's just too horrible to believe. How do you know? Well, yesterday I went through his files. Most of the answers were there. You told me the first time you and Tom quarreled was when he brought home a murderer. Babe Fox? Babe Fox. Oh, poor Tom. Poor Tom. Mike, what can we do about it? I promise you won't say anything about this. I don't want Bay Fox to have time to prepare an alibi. I won't say anything. I'm grateful for what you've done. While I was going through Tom's papers, I found a copy of his will. He must have loved you very much, May. Outside of a few charitable contributions, he left his entire fortune to you. I know. Mike. Can you understand that even though Tom and I weren't happy together, I still loved him very much. Yeah. Today's going to be very important. I may need you. Don't leave. I won't. Thanks. May seemed too anxious to accuse Babe Fox. I had a hunch that Ray Arthur was the big answer. Janice was on time. I knew she wasn't going to like what I wanted her to do. Dar, I love you. If you asked me at midnight to walk over hot coals, I'd do it. But to take a dancing lesson at 11 in the morning, that's too much. Get another girl. I'm sure you asked for Ray Arthur. I want a perfect description of him. Treat him like a third customer. I'll wait for you at your club. You need this to get in. You know, Dar, I'll do it. But I'll bet you this bum will want a rumba. Oh. Imagine a rumba at 11 in the morning. Ah. An hour later, I heard the front door open. It was Janice. What a deal. Now, he's a road company Romeo. No class. Yeah? Go on. He's a dressed-up dummy full of soft talk, the kind that went out with high shoes. And he loves to dance the rumba. You know the type, doll. Strong arms, fluid hips, and feet that fly. His type bores me. Anything else happen? Yeah, he tried to make a date. I told him he couldn't afford me. Then he suggested private lessons. He said today was his last one. Oh, and he said something about opening his own studio in the next couple of months. Oh. Doll, I'm lucky I even heard. I'm still asleep. He left the joint as soon as our lesson was over. For me? It wasn't soon enough. Thanks, Janice. Do me one more favor, huh? Oh, no. Not another. Go home and get some sleep. Doll, I'm with you. That's the right kind of talk for this time of morning. With all the pieces put together, I had a complete picture. I wanted Ray Arthur. I had an idea where he'd be. I wish Tom East hadn't sent for me. I knew now who had killed him, and I was going to prove it. I felt a little sick inside. This was a job I would like to have given to someone else. When I heard the music, I wasn't sick anymore. I was just mad. Arthur was here. I wanted to get my hands on him. music be playing in a dead man's house. You Ray Arthur? Yeah. What are you doing here? I'm a friend of the family's too. What's left of it? Tell your story walking, chum. We got business. You've got trouble. <laughs> How did you do it? Do what? Murder Tom East. I didn't have anything to do with it. It was hit and run. 
You were going to open a new dancing school. Where was the money coming from? I saved it. <laughs> don't. I don't want to be mixed up in any more. Let me go, please. Mike. Let him go. Are you telling the truth? May. Get out quickly before I change my mind. Tell me about it. Why waste time and energy? You've got it figured. I killed him. What happens now? I kill you. And then I muss my hair, tear my pajamas, and wait for the cops. The Tony's wife kills friend of the family, huh? I don't understand, said the beautiful Mrs. East when she recovered from her terrifying experience. One moment we were talking about my husband. The next moment, he was rushing at me, wild-eyed. I grabbed a gun to save myself. Then everything went black. I telephoned Needy while I was waiting for me to come, too. He was on his way over. What happened? Don't you remember? Everything went black. Madrid. You never got over him, did you? That's part of it. And the rest? The rest is looking into the mirror one morning, realizing you're 40. And that the face and the figure you've been so proud of are beginning to sag a little. You remember lights and music and applause and attention. You want one more whirl on the merry-go-round before you put your cue in the rack. You've been married for a long time to a grand guy. And you try to explain it to him. But he's 20 years older than you. He tries to make up to you for it, with bigger houses and more expensive presents. You try. You try hard. But every time you look in that mirror, you can hear it saying, hurry, hurry. And you meet somebody that takes you back 20 years. You fight that, too. It's no use. Even though you know in your heart it'll never work. And so you start to buy the years. They become more and more expensive. Mike, you're a man. I can't make you see it. I see it all but one thing. Why did you kill him? I loved him, Mike. I didn't want to hurt him. May was mentally sick. I only hope that Tom died never knowing the truth about her. May wasn't a pretty sight. Neely booked her for murder. We knew she had no chance to beat the rap. As for me, I came back to thank Janice for her help. Doll, I'm not sure I'm glad to see you. Should I be? You're on your own. The last time you said no more questions. Doll, you mean you're fresh out of questions. I've been parked across the street for hours. I counted the customers. I figure I'm the third one, and the till needs a profit. Mm -hmm.